Welcome to Electron Online, and here is an interesting byproduct of the Doppler effect. It's called the sonic boom, and everybody probably knows what a sonic boom is, but maybe not know for sure how it's caused. We know that if anything, like an airplane or a bull or anything, goes faster than the speed of sound, it causes a sonic boom. So why is that? Why do we hear sonic booms? So let's imagine here that we have a plane that's flying quite fast, but as long as the velocity is less than the velocity of sound, the sound waves that are being produced will move faster than the source of the sound, the airplane. And so anytime uh, a wave was created, the wave will of course expand in a spherical direction, in all direction, the sound wave. You can see that the plane is losing ground relative to the sound waves. The sound waves that were produced a little while ago are moving away from the plane, although very slowly in the front moving away from the plane, of course, very quickly relative to the plane because the plane is moving to the right. But what happens when the velocity of the plane continues to increase and eventually reaches the speed of sound? So now we're in a situation where velocity is equal to the velocity of sound. What happens now? Well, the plane makes a sound wave, sound wave travels out, the plane makes another sound wave, travels out, and again, that's of course due to the vibration of the engines of the plane and anything on the plane that's making noise. And uh, you can see that when the, if the plane moves at the same speed as the sound, then the next wave will be produced exactly in the same locations where the previous wave is. Even though it's moved away, the plane is keeping pace with that wave, the next wave is produced the same place, the third wave on the same place, the fourth wave in the same place, and of course these waves are being produced at a rate of hundreds if not thousands per second, depending upon what the frequency of the sound is. And all along, the waves just keep following the plane and they start building up, and we have now a wave front where many sound waves are on top of each other. It's called they're superimposed on one another. They're also in phase because they're produced at the same part of their, their, their uh, wave cycle. And so the intensity of this wave front of the sound is equal to the number of waves that are on top of each other times the intensity of a single wave. You can see that after 10 waves, that's an addition of 10 dBs in sound. After 100 waves, that's a 20 dB. After 1,000 waves, that's 30 dB and so forth. So you can see that very quickly the sound of that sound wave builds up and makes an enormous sound as when you hear it. Now typically we have this vertical sound wave that's being carried by this airplane that's moving at the speed of sound. And so a person standing on the ground below where the plane flies, as the plane goes overhead, immediately hears this enormous loud boom of all these wave sounds right on top of each other. What happens when an airplane begins to fly faster than the speed of sound? Like in this case, V is greater than the velocity of sound. And of course I should write sound just to make sure that we understand what we're talking about. So here's the velocity of the plane, which is now faster than the speed of sound. So what happens is it makes a sound wave. The wave goes in all directions. The plane continues flying, makes another sound wave. But notice the plane is flying faster than the speed of sound. So when it makes the next sound wave, it's already farther than the wave that's expanding out in spherical direction outward. So the new waves are being produced further and further and further along. But they're very, very close together. So what happens then is we end up with a spherical cone of sound that's expanding with the plane trying to be ahead of that sound and actually exceeding, uh, succeeding in being ahead of the sound. But what happens then is that we see this, this edge of that cone shape expanding sound uh, is we have what we call a superimposition, superimposed waves on top of each other uh, because the edge of that spherical expansion of sound forms this cone shape region. And so the very loud sound again is caused here just like it's caused here because of all this superimposing of these waves on top of each other so we have what we call constructive interference of thousands and thousands of these waves. In this case though the cone shaped uh, region of that sound wave will not hit an observer right below the airplane as it passes overhead because it's going to take a while for this cone to move to the right and reach the observer here. By then the plane will already be quite a bit farther away. We can actually calculate how long it will take for this sound to reach the observer if we know the speed of the plane and the height of the plane and we know the shape of this cone. It turns out we can find what the shape of this current cone is if you assume this to be the angle theta and notice the faster the plane flies the narrower this cone is going to be, the slower the plane flies, the wider the cone is going to be if it flies at the speed of sound. Of course, we now have a 90 degree angle. And the equation that describes that shape of that cone is the sine of theta. 
is equal to the ratio of the velocity of sound divided by the velocity of the plane. So let me just write it like this, and plane like that, so it makes it clear. Notice that if they're equal to each other, that's equal to 1. The sine of theta equal 1 means theta needs to be, of course, 90 degrees. But if the velocity of the sun is less than the velocity of the plane, then this fraction will be less than 1, and then the angle theta will become smaller. For example, let's say that a plane is flying at Mach 2. Mach 2 means twice the speed of sound. That implies that the velocity of the plane is equal to 2 times the velocity of the sound. And let's find out what the size of that cone will be. What will be the angle of that cone-shaped sound boom that flies along with the plane? Uh, that would be the sine of theta is equal to the velocity of the sound, which is uh, v of sound, divided by the velocity of the plane, which is twice the velocity of sound, like that. Of course, velocity of sound cancels out, and you end up with one half. So that means theta equals the arc sine of one half. And when is the angle, the sine of an angle equal to one half? That means that theta has to be 30 degrees. So that means we have a cone-shaped region where the angle here is 30 degrees. That's how we figure that out. Now, one last thing about the sonic boom, which most people are probably a little bit confused about, is when does the boom occur? Does it occur when the plane breaks the sound barrier and then becomes silent after that? Or do you hear a sonic boom the entire time the plane flies faster than the speed of sound? And it turns out, as long as the plane is moving faster than the speed of sound, it will continue to build up this cone-shaped sound region where the edge of that cone shape is really loud with those thousands and thousands of sound waves superimposed on each other, and so that boom just gets carried along with the plane. So if a plane flies across the country, spends two hours flying above the speed of sound, that sonic boom comes along, and everybody that, that is in the vicinity of that plane will hear that loud boom. It's not just when it breaks the sound barrier, it's while it's at the sound barrier or above that you hear the sonic boom continuously. And that's what causes a sonic boom.